on today's video, moving from WordPress development into Webflow development. So I got an email a few days ago from somebody called Adrian. Adrian? Adrian, right. And he was telling me that he's a WordPress developer and he's been watching the vlog. He was kind of sold on giving Webflow a try, but he's trying to understand what would be the process. So he already has a process when he's working with his um, clients, building a WordPress website for them. Usually the way that it works, they have to go and buy hosting and then send him kind of cPanel credentials. He then installs WordPress for them and then they start the design and development process over there and he's using Elementor to build websites for them. Now he got really excited after watching my videos about Webflow, so we looked into it. Looks really cool, but he's not sure like what should be the process working with clients, how would that be different? He even made kind of a table to understand the cost of for him as a designer working in uh, Webflow rather than in WordPress. So I wanna cover how I think about this. So usually the process that I work with my clients is I have my own premium account, kind of professional account on Webflow that allows me to create as many websites as I want. Usually I do the design on my side. So I first, I do design and I build the website and I show them how this is going to look like. This is before they have hosting, before you know they have anything at all. Maybe they don't even have a domain yet. So I'm building everything on my side. Once everything is ready, you know, and we can even collaborate, we can do the fixes while the website is on my account. Once the design is ready, I tell them to open a Webflow account and then I just do transfer website. I transfer the website over to them and then I help them connect it to their own domain. And then at that point, they pay for the hosting and they pay for, you know, they don't need a Webflow plan basically, so you just pay for the hosting. And so I personally, as a designer, I only pay for the Webflow professional plan. I don't pay for hosting besides my own personal website that I pay for. Um, but my client and my clients on the other high end, they don't pay for a Webflow subscription. They just pay for the Webflow uh, hosting service. So this is basically how it goes. And according to the calculation that um, Adrian did, because he's now paying Elementor and then he's paying another service, which I forgot his name, to host the, the WordPress website that he has. It's basically the same cost, I think. I don't know, I think that it would even be cheaper on Webflow because you only have to pay the Webflow subscription. But in general, that's the process that I use. It worked really well for me. I know that some designers keep their own website. They charge through Webflow allows you to billing, do client billing so you can charge your clients while you keep the hosting on your end, but I don't like it. I like to have my clients own their own website, so I just do transfer a website, and it just gives them complete control. If they want me to do something or change something, then they send me their, um, their Webflow credentials for their own account. So basically, this is it, Adrian. I hope this helps you um, realize that your process will be much cheap, you know, not even cheaper, but faster, more efficient, and you'll get better results with Webflow. So I hope this um, was helpful for you. If you've got any more process questions, you can send them all below. By the way, uh, some of you guys know that I have a Webflow masterclass where I teach all of this, exactly how I do my client onboarding, how I sell to my clients the idea of working with Webflow you know, explaining the value of it, how the pricing works and everything. So if you're interested in that, you can click check out the link below to that. Have an awesome day and I will catch you guys tomorrow.